What's up, everybody? Protohype here, and I'm back to walk you through another brand new, amazing minimal audio plugin. Let's talk about the Ripple Phaser. You might be out there watching this thinking, oh, it's a phaser. A phaser's a phaser. Let me be the first to tell you, no. This phaser is special, and I'm going to show you why. Let's get right into it. Let's walk through the interface a little bit. The first thing that I notice that I really like is the immediate control of the notches. So a lot of phasers only have a few notches, including like filters from other synthesizer plugins. Maybe you'll get four, three. This goes all the way up to 24 notches. Now, 24 might be overkill, but when it comes to creative sound design, nothing is overkill. So this can be really cool. One of my favorite tips to tell people who want to learn more about sound design is that you need peaks and notches and you need them to be moving. That's the best way to make a sound interesting. You can see out the gates, we got movement all over the place. Which brings me to the first thing that I want to show you, which is the mod depth. Over here on the left side, we can pull this mod depth up or down. And if you bring it to zero, it takes away all of the stereo movement, which I think is actually really effective because you can use this as a traditional filter instead of maybe your traditional phaser sound, which sounds very wide and movementy, which is obviously awesome. But it's nice to know that you have the option to just keep it stagnant. I've loaded up a preset from Current. This is the Reese Crackle preset because I think adding peaks and notches to Reese's is the best way to make this sound unique. As soon as we activate the ripple phaser, you can see that it's getting to work. It's starting to move. Let's hear what it sounds like. Those are those notch sounds that you wanna be hearing. Back to the mod depth wheel. If we set this to zero, we now have our stagnant peaks. There's the texture I want. But say I wanna move those peaks around. Ripple phaser has this unique interactive interface, which I think is really awesome because what's more fun with sound design than moving a knob around in real time? As this knob moves around, you can see things like the center and the feedback and the offset all moving in time with it, which means that you don't have to individually automate anything if you don't feel really comfortable with an advanced plugin like this. You can also keep it super simple. In my opinion, the best plugins are both simple and complex at the same time and allow you to do really whatever you want. And Ripple Phaser does that. This plugin can also be a great learning tool. The best way to understand a new plugin is to use deductive reasoning to find out exactly what's happening. And having a visual tool like these two color waves right here makes it really simple. We can see that the blue and purple waves moving left and right are both side signals and affecting the stereo field in their own unique way. So this is a great way to understand the way that phasing works, stereo width, all those types of things that a phaser can bring to the table to help you become a better music producer. Last thing about the mod depth here, as the modulation depth increases, you can see that the distance between the blue and the purple increases as well, which means you're getting some really gnarly movement. It's easily tamed by just moving this mod depth wheel down. Moving on to the bottom left here, where we talk about rate, shape, randomize, and offset. This is basically like an LFO for your phaser. You can set your rate, which is synced to the tempo of your track, and the shape will be your basic shapes. So sine, triangle, ramp, and square. Let's load up an init patch just so we can see exactly what's happening in the sound. Plus the init patch, it sounds cool. first thing that pops into my head when I think about phasers is a unique way to add stereo width or even multiple voices. Ripple Phaser takes that concept and applies it in an LFO way so you can also add movement to your sound as well. Speaking of movement, here's the Easy Wub preset. All of the presets in Ripple Phaser are awesome too, so you don't need to nerd out. You can also just click a preset and have fun. Here's a simple little lead melody chord combo that I wrote with no effects on it. Now let's add the Easy Wub preset. It's just a lot more fun and interesting. Okay, back to Ripple Phaser. Let's set these parameters to their default position and I'll tell you about these middle knobs. This slider here is called the Mod Balance Slider. This affects the amount of internal modulation that is sent to the bend knob, center knob, and spread knob. So when this slider is all the way up, you can see that it centers around where this purple point is, which is ironically the center knob. 
So if we move the center knob up or down with the mod balance all the way up, these peaks will follow us around. This helps for applying the phaser effect to a very specific frequency. As we move the bend knob, you can see that the peaks scoot left or right. And the spread knob will either increase or decrease the width of these peaks. Bottom line is you've got a lot of control with this effect. Let's move on to the feedback knob. This knob, when cranked, will give you really gnarly results. That's pretty sweet, but let's speed up the rate. So many possibilities. This button here is the cross feedback knob. When this is turned on, it activates stereo cross configuration where the left channel is fed into the right and the right channel is fed into the left. This basically just flips this effect on its back and gives you some incredibly weird results. The last thing I want to talk about with Ripple Phaser is all these different modes. We've got classic, inverted, clean, low pass, high pass, band pass, and disperse. The classic mode is just going to be your classic phaser. The inverted mode will invert the phase. I like this clean mode. It gives you a much more targeted effect. Sometimes you just want to be precise. My favorite modes, though, are the low pass, high pass, and band pass. These are basically filters combined with a phaser. These effects are super aggressive, but when you combine them with the dry wet, you're able to create your own unique filtering mode. The last mode is disperse. To properly showcase this, I wanted to bring in a growl sound. It sounds like this. As an OG dubstep producer, adding a phaser to your growl is just what you do. It makes it sound so much more interesting and unique. This disperser mode sounds especially cool on transients or harmonically rich sounds. If we just modulate this bend knob, we're gonna get some really badass results. Those peaks are making it so much more growly People ask me a lot about how to take splice sounds, flip them, and make them more unique. This plugin will be perfect for that. Resample, resample, pitch, rinse and repeat, automate. Using the Ripple Phaser here will make your sounds instantly unique and your own. So that's a basic walkthrough of the Ripple Phaser. I've only scratched the surface of what you can do with this amazing effect. Go get Ripple Phaser now. Peace.